My name is Bill Kavanaugh, and I'm here with the St. John's Chapter of the Council of Canadians. Uh, for those of you who don't know, let me just briefly tell you uh, who we are, who the Council, uh, what the Council of Canadians is all about. Uh, we're a non-partisan group, and we are the largest citizens organization in the country, okay? And we make it our business to do things like we're doing here today, okay? It's about civil society and promoting progressive policies on things from energy okay, to the environment to water to human rights. Okay? And why? You might ask, why is the Council of Canadians interested in a rally like this? Well, in our vision statement, we promote a living democracy. And I want to briefly do something now that I think it's, it's important to do as members of civil society. And I also want to do it to remind government. And what I want to do is remind people and government what democracy actually is. The true democracy, by definition, is government. And when I say government, I don't want you to picture this building or ones like it or the people in it. But democracy is government where we all have a say in what our policies and our laws, our laws are and where we go. Hey, that's what true democracy is. The government needs to remember that. Now, of course, we don't live in a true democracy. Okay? We live in a parliamentary democracy. Now you can picture this building. Okay? A parliamentary democracy is when we have people like these gentlemen here who represent what we want. Okay? And government needs to remember that as well. Especially the government of Newfoundland and Labrador right now. They are there to represent what we want. They are supposed to work for us. That's what the that's what the that's what democracy is. Now I want to speak briefly to this privacy of information bill, this bill twenty so called bill twenty nine. Okay? In my opinion, this is a hit on our democracy on two fronts. First, it's the play out of what happened here this week. When we the people, in my opinion, I don't know about yours, but public opinion this week has been against Bill 29. The media, the media, including the national media, have been outspoken against Bill 29. Experts. Experts. The national media has questioned this. The international, an international organization called Law and Democracy has questioned this. And I will end, I will end briefly by making a, a note about the, about the, the, the Center for Law and Democracy. The second hit on democracy is the contents of this bill. And politicians, our politicians and MHAs can speak to it better than I can. But this bill removes our access to information. It limits it. In order to approach, improve our democracy, we need to know what our representatives are doing. We need to know when they do it, not five years or 20 years down the road. Now I want to end, I'm sure most people here have heard about the uh, report that the Center for Law and Democracy has done, an international uh, reputed body, okay? I've done some analysis and I'd like to share it with you right now and to the media because we have all been distracted from what the Center for Law and Democracy has told us, okay? It was, we got distracted in the House of Assembly by exchanges between MHAs and maybe some unparliamentary language possibly. It distracted us though. <laughs> May have been accurate, yes. So here's what here's what I've done. For those of you who haven't seen it, they've ranked very rigorously. There's seven categories and they've awarded points to each country. Okay? 
I won't get into the, the fine details, but there are seven categories, a total of 150 points. The points don't really matter, the number of points, okay? And it doesn't matter which country is ahead or behind us. That's just a distraction. So what I did was, I took Newfoundland and Labrador's points before and after, and I placed them in the 89 countries that have been ranked, okay? Now, in total points, we went from 21 out of 90 countries, Newfoundland and Labrador, down to 28 on the international scale. That's a shame. In the category of exceptions and refusal, refusals, we've gone from an international ranking of 30 out of 90 to 54. Shame. Shame. This is shameful. You watch it. And what the media needs to know, needs to report, and what you need to know, again, it's not important who's, which countries are ahead or behind us, or exactly how many points we had before or after. It's the direction we're moving. Yeah. We have dropped yeah. big time on the international scale in terms of our access to information. Thank you.
equality for all. In solidarity, Jerry. Felix Collins, Moldova's northeast of Romania. So there's a geographical note there. Uh, the you can't read it right anyways. <laughs> uh, the Liberals worked really hard on this as well. I was just wondering if there was somebody here from their office who might want to just come up and give, bring greetings as well. Uh, George Murphy has something to say? George, the new Liberal. <laughs> well, party, <of> <laughs> yeah, We're talking about gas of a different kind here today. We're talking about Bill 29, so I'll leave the unleaded out. We know that our our freedoms are at a premium here today. But I want to thank you all for coming out as well, and I want to thank our liberal brothers as well on, on the same side of the house for using their voices along with our voices to talk about our discontent with this Bill 29, a bill that is so regressive. I don't know which country we're in, but we're going to have to ask Felix Collins what he wants to call us. At the same time as that, I'd like to tell you all that perhaps the one thing that we should do for the progressive conservatives and the stand that they're taking is to take up, take up a collection so that we can subscribe them to National Geographic so that we can tell them all where to go in 2015. <laughs> They need to refresh this bill, they need to consult with the people. The simple fact is, is that if we had to have standing committees working in this province, we would not be standing here today. We would not be standing here today. We all have voices. We deserve to have each one of our members of the House of Assembly represent the needs of us as a people. We do not see that in Bill 29. We see regression. We see oppression. And most of all, we see support. Support for companies. Welcome to Newfoundland and Labrador Incorporated, ladies and gentlemen. This is happening right now before our very eyes. At a branch of our history where we have major projects happening like Muskrat Falls, you no longer have a say because they can stamp it as a cabinet secret. How does the debate on the future of the province as a people, how is that supposed to happen with the regressive policy like Bill 29 represents? I ask you. We know where we're going. We're going down a rabbit hole and it's even it's even been happening even all the way back since the 1980s when freedom of information uh, legislation was first passed, I guess, in this particular case, by the federal government and the provincial government here in 1981. We need review of privacy legislation, but we need openness and transparency so that the people can be well represented at the same time. The fight will continue. The petition will be passed around. I think there's already a lot of names on it. We hope that you take it and you send it province-wide province-wide and indeed of some people around the country who are already expressing their own discontent with their governments, they're beating on pots and pans, they're marching in the streets, they'll go ahead and they'll occupy parks, they'll send that message. We have lost something with government over the past 20 or 30 years and it's even John Crosby himself in 1982 who said that there should be more freedoms brought up for the people. Some documents that are sent now as government secrets do not have to be. Sometimes, he, he has even admitted himself, sometimes they have even gone too far. This government now has gone too far. Thank you very much for listening. Thanks for coming.